Hey guys, Jacob Scott, Lorance product expert. Today, we're out here on the water. We've got another webinar for you. We're doing sonar interpretation. So what we're gonna cover today is your 2D sonar, um, your structure scan, your down scan, how to interpret those and what you're looking at on the water. So uh, we got a lot of stuff that we're gonna cover. Uh, one of the things we're gonna talk about is uh, cone angles, um, we're going to show you some of the sonar targets that we use when we're on the water testing this stuff uh, so you can get an idea of how we look at things. Um, it's a beautiful day out here. It's really sunny. It's a little warm. We got a nice breeze. Uh, we just want to let you guys know that if, you, if we have any uh, technical difficulties, um, our production equipment has been kind of getting a little warm in the sun today. Um, a couple times when we were doing tests earlier, you know, things kind of shut down on us. Uh, but if they do shut down, we will get things up as quick as possible. Uh, just refresh those browsers and we should hopefully be back with you as quick as we can. So um, I've got uh, Lucas and the guys, they're uh, answering your questions in the chat. Um, feel free to ask all those questions in the chat. Um, some of those questions that they're going to kick to me, we'll answer those live for you. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and we're going to talk a little bit about sonars and cone angles. Um, so we got a couple little... Uh, little props here for you. So this is a 2D transducer and this is basically what your 2D sonar cone angle looks like. It's actually a cone that goes down into the water. It's round. This is actually what produces the arches for you that you see on the screen because the fish are going to come in here. They're going to come in on the small side. It's going to kind of angle up. You'll see it like that. So when the fish comes into that cone angle, coming inside and outside of that cone angle, the difference in that cone is just kind of what creates those arches that we see on the screen. Uh, one of the questions we get a lot of is, how big am I looking out of the bottom? So it's a, kind of a rough way to say that would be one third of your depth. So if you're in 30 feet of water, your cone down here is going to be about 10 feet in diameter. So if you're in uh, 10 feet of water, you're looking at about a three foot diameter cone. So that's just kind of one of those quick things for you to see. Just kind of give you a visual. This is pretty much what your cone, cone looks like when you're on the water. So we talked about some targets and stuff like that that we're going to use. Um, this is one of the targets that we use a lot when we're on the water. It's just a float with the lead. And then we have some bobbers on here at various depths. Uh, and this is really great because these bobbers are pretty indicative of what a fish's air bladder is like. Um, so we put these in the water and it gives us something really good to use as a target that's very stationary. Uh, when we're out here a lot of times, uh, you know, fish don't always cooperate and they won't stay in the same spot so that we can go over them pass after pass after pass. So uh, we'll chuck these in the water here in a couple of minutes and uh, we'll make some passes on them so you can see kind of what the arches and that sort of stuff look like. Uh, so one of the things we get all the time about our sonar technology, I mean, 60 years we've been doing this. We started off with a little green box with a flasher, uh, all the way up to what we have now with our chirp sonar, you know, down scan, side scan, all these amazing sonar technologies that started with us 60 years ago. So um, one of the questions we get a lot is, what is chirp sonar? Um, it stands for Compressed High Intensity Radar Pulses. Big long word, big, big fancy word. Well, I mean, all the words are kind of not fancy, but altogether, it's kind of a big fancy technology. And essentially what it does is we have a bunch of frequencies that we put out into water in a burst. So if you're using, say, high chirp, instead of putting out like, you know, most people are used to using 280 for their high, or for their 200 and then 83 is our medium, which is what most transducers have that are on the water. So the chirp for 200, let's say it starts at 160 and goes to 210. So what it does is instead of just a big burst at the same frequency, it would do 160, 161, 162. And all of these little different frequencies, just they make a little different sonar pulse into the water. So it comes back with more information. What does it do for you? It gives you some great things like clarity in the water column, target separation. I mean, a, a burst of 200, typically you had to have about 13 inches of separation to be able to see multiple targets. Now with Chirp, 
all you need is about three inches of separation to see those multiple targets together. Um, the way I explain it to a lot of people is it's like taking a big old thing of marbles that each marble is just a little bit different size than the other one. You start with your smallest one up to your bigger ones and you just dump them in the water. They make all sorts of different size rings that roll out through the water and that's basically kind of kind of what chirp sonar is. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take our sonar target. I'm going to unroll this a little bit until I get past these uh, and then we're going to dump this over in the water here. So you can see we've got some separation on these targets. I'm just going to throw this out in the water. It's going to flutter down. My buoy is going to pop back up here. You can see my buoy's popped up, so I know my targets are down in the water. So let's drive around and look at some sonar targets. <coughs> so one of the questions we get a lot of the times is, where is my transducer on the screen? And the transducer is going to be typically at the back of the boat. So the left hand side of the screen, you can see how we're scrolling, or the right hand side of the screen, we scroll from the right side to the left side. So what you see here at the right side of the screen is the back of the boat where your transducer's at. So that's gonna be where the back of the transducer is. So anything that we pass when we see it on the screen is right here at the back of the boat when we're driving. We're going to go ahead and go past our targets here. So you can see on the screen, in the area we're at, we've got a, a lot of bottom, different bottom transitions. Um, we've got a lot of timber in this water, so we get some, uh, we've also got a lot of shallow areas in here. So a lot of times you'll see that we get some growth down in here. And as I drive over it here, there's the three targets that I put in the water. You can see they're stacked up. You can see we've got nice clean target separation. Um, you can see right there, it's just a nice clean repeatable target. You can see up here in the top of the column, looks like we got a little bait ball that's in there. Um, again, when I look at this down here on the bottom, this is color palette number 13 that I'm using. Um, I just like it because it gives me a definitive bottom. And then when I see the transitions, usually this will be like some soft stuff or something like that that's on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and turn around. We're going to go back by these sonar targets again and just kind of show you that this gives us a nice repeatable pattern to be able to look at. Um, so this is something great if you guys are out on the water and you just kind of want to see how your sonar is working for you. This is something real easy. Most guys have a lot of this stuff in their boat. They've got these throw buoys and things like that. So it's real easy just to make one of these targets up real quick to throw in the water, drive over it, look at it. It kind of helps you understand what you're looking at, make sure you're getting you know, the arches that you're wanting to see and things like that. So again, we're coming back up here. We're gonna drive past our buoy. My bow's coming up on it right now, so you should see these targets in just a second. As you can see right there on that ledge, there's our three targets. So you may ask why I've got a big drop off there on this side when I didn't have it when we were going the other way. Um, we're right here on the edge of the creek channel in this area. Uh, looks like I dropped them right on the edge of that creek channel. So, I mean, that gives you just the ability to see where you got your what. You go from shallow to deep, you've got those depths, you see some of those transitions that are in there, but you can also see those targets in there. We're gonna drive back by them one more time. Kind of show you what those look like again.
guys, don't forget while you're out there getting on the water with your family and your friends, you know, don't forget to hashtag the Anglers Unite. Um, it just kind of helps bring us all together. Uh, you know, send us those pictures and things like that. Uh, we like to see that. Actually, if you look right here on the screen, you can see right here where we turned around, we've got some fish stacked up there. Um, you know, well, that's kind of funny that you see sometimes. We've been over that area two or three times, hadn't seen anything. We go back and we make another pass and we've got some fish in the area. So uh, we also run into this all the time with our target buoys when we're out here doing this. Fish will come over and start hanging out by our target buoys. You can see we right down here at the bottom of the screen, right by our target buoys, we've got some fish that are down there towards the bottom. And again, we have a bait ball suspended up there towards the top. So it's just really amazing the things like that that you can see when you're out here on the water. Um, just taking the time to look at these uh, sonar soundings. It's, it's just really, really awesome. So in this area, it looks like we've got a little bit of uh, softness in this bottom right in here, which is not unusual. Uh, the wind's been blowing back in this cove today, so we've got a lot of stuff that's come in here. This is one of the areas that we usually get a little bit of growth and stuff in the water. So uh, we usually have some plants and stuff that grow up in here. So again, as we're driving through here, you can see these blobs that we see like this, typically when I'm looking at that, when I see those, I think I'm seeing bait balls. Um, I say I think I'm seeing bait balls just because of my experience and time on the water, catching bait for the type of fishing I do. Um, that's what I look for. I'm looking for those bait balls to find bait to catch. The other thing is, is I look for those bait balls when I'm looking for the types of fish I'm fishing for. Uh, this, the lake we're on here is Skytook uh, in Oklahoma. It's got a really great hybrid striped bass population. So I do a lot of fishing for those out here. And so that's one thing I do in the areas that I fish. I look for these bait balls. And when we find these bait balls, we usually find the fish arches and stuff around them. Uh, we're just kind of driving down through this area. We're driving over an old roadbed. Um, as you can see, looking on the screen, we got a lot of nice arches. So we've got quite a few fish back in here, um, more than likely. Uh, back in this area, typically I don't find hybrids back in this stuff, but back in here with this flooded and timber and stuff, we find a lot of bass back in here. We'll find largemouth bass. Then we also start getting into these treetops and stuff in this flooded timber and we'll find crappie and things like that. Uh, so as I'm looking at my screen here, so I'm going to start looking at this. When I see a big mass like this, typically in my mind, what I'm looking at is that's, that's probably some submerged timber or flooded timber um, with some fish and stuff hanging in it. Uh, I know from fishing this area, you see these arches as we get into the top of these trees, there's usually a lot of crappie that hang out in these trees also. Uh, so that's one reason why we get a lot of bass back in here too. They like to eat these crappie. Um, but you can see we've got them piled up on the tree and then out here on the fringes of them, again, just from my experience and being on the water and looking at it, I'm going to say we're looking at probably some bass or something else like that out here on the fringes. So we're going to drive around here a little more. Luke, do we have any questions yet? Yeah, I think the biggest question we have so far is uh, how can you tell the difference between hard and soft bottom and what the color does the bottom be? Okay. So hard and soft bottoms. I'm going to change this real quick. So this is palette number one, which is our default palette that you guys, uh, a lot of people see and they look at. So one of the ways to differentiate between a hard and a soft bottom is the brightness of the returns on this color. So as you can see right here, it's getting really yellowish and really bright. So typically when I see that brightness in that yellow, that tells me that I'm looking at a harder bottom. Um, just looking at the area that I've got around here, We've kind of moved over to the other side of this cove. We've got a lot of rock um, and boulder and stuff like that that's over here that these trees have grown up in. So when I look at this, I'm going, yeah, more than likely I'm looking at a hard bottom there. So when I look at a different color on the bottom, when I'm seeing like those reds and the blues and stuff like that, typically when I see that, I feel like that's usually a softer bottom. You know, maybe we've got some mud and some silt that's piled in there and that's why I'm getting that. But again, because that return is not as bright and is not as hard, so basically the hotter the return, 
the brighter the return, the harder your bottom's gonna be. So again, this is uh, palette number one. Um, I use palette 13 a lot, it's just a preferred palette. And usually if I'm running over a really soft bottom, like you saw those green colors and stuff that popped up earlier, that shows me I've got that bottom transition going on there. So uh, when I see stuff stacked up like this where it's just like right on top of each other, ding, 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 usually that's gonna be some flooded timber or tree or something like that that's coming up off the bottom. Um, a lot of times I'll use my down scan and my side scan just to verify that for myself. If I don't have that and I'm just looking at the sonar, then that tells me, you know, I'm gonna go with my interpretation of what I've been looking at. Now, as you can see right in here, about 23, 23 feet, you see that little change, you kind of see that blued out area in there. So with the way the water's been heating up around here, the lake's right around 87 degrees right now. So to me, that's gonna be the start of our thermocline in the water here. So when you see a drop off in an area like that, and then you see kind of the blues and the reds right in there, but you know it's not a solid bottom. That's typically your thermocline in the lakes once it starts heating up in the summer. Uh, and you can see that because as you get down there, the water gets colder and it gets denser. So that denser water actually provides some returns back to you. And that's, uh, that's how you see those thermoclines on the screen. Um, we can see a lot of stuff in the column here. I know from where we're driving, uh, we've got some flooded timber in here. So when you see these big long streaks while you're moving like that, typically that's one of those big trees at the bottom and you're getting the, the uh, returns off the tree limbs and stuff in the, in the bottom. When you get out here to the side and you see these more defined arches, those are typically the fish on the outside of it. Again, looking down here at the bottom, this is gonna look like a thermocline to me. You can see we've got some trees and again, your thermocline is going to be pretty consistent in the lake. So if you're seeing it at 23 feet here, you're going to see it at starting at 23 feet in most of the other areas of the lake. So that's what we're looking at on thermocline there. Jacob, I believe we have a, a question around what makes the fish artist size happen and how do they affect it? Okay, that's a good question. So the question that, uh, that was just asked is, uh, what causes the fish arches to happen? You know, what makes them different sizes? You know, how is it a bigger size? Uh, so what creates that? And what creates that is the fish in the cone angle. So as the fish comes in and out of the cone angle, especially when you're moving, you'll see these arches, they're really nice and defined. And they're usually pretty uniform in size. So the bigger your fish arch is, the bigger the fish is. So uh, a lot of times you'll see kind of one area inside it that's got a brighter return and things like that. That's typically the air bladder on the fish uh, that we're getting that return from. Uh, you saw that when we drove over our um, marker buoy with our, with our bobbers on it. You could see how nice and defined those fish arches were. So as the cone angle comes down like this and the fish come into it, it just kind of creates that arch as it enters the cone angle, it's a little bit lower. As it's coming through the cone angle, it gets that high center to it. And then as it comes back out, it levels out. So that's what creates the arches. Now, a lot of times, um, if you're sitting still, if you're like slowly working a, a bank on a trolling motor, or if you're, say, catfishing or hybrid and striper fishing, and you're out there and you're anchored up, you know, you've got You've got your motor on anchor, you're sitting in one spot, you've got an anchor line out, however you're holding to that spot. A lot of times guys are like, well, I get this real long arch. What is that? Well, that's a fish and it's staying in the transducer cone. So as long as it stays in that cone angle, it's going to show up on screen. As you look on the screen here, you can see I put the boat in neutral. So we're just kind of slowly drifting a little bit but you can see these fish that are down here, they're staying in, that, in the cone angle for quite a while. So as long as they're in the angle, they're gonna create that arch. They're gonna continue to create that arch. And the longer they sit in it, the longer that arch is gonna be. I mean, there's been times where I've been out, you know, hybrid fishing and I'm sitting on a spot and my screen is just one big long streak because 
I've come up on a wolf pack of hybrids and they're all just sitting there in the same spot, you know. They're coming in, they're smacking the baits that I've got, they're staying under my transducer. So they just kind of create this giant long smear on the screen. And as long as I got that smear on the screen, I know I'm in the fish. So as you can see right here, we've got some fish that are down here. We're pretty much hanging over the top of them. So you can see it's just kind of creating that long arch. We've kind of, we're kind of moving off of them. So we're going to go ahead and put the gear and boat and idle around a little bit more. See if we can uh, get some more fish to cooperate with us and uh, pop up on the screen. Okay, perfect. Great question. So the question we got is using the menu and changing your contrast and sensitivity and things like that on the screen. So I'm going to go to the menu here. So uh, the sensitivity and the color line are two of the things we use the most on the water. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep moving around a little bit while we're talking. So my sensitivity is in auto and that's really, to be honest, that's where I leave it almost 100% of the time. Very seldom do I take it out of auto. And the reason is the, the auto adjusts itself up and down to kind of help me create the best picture on the screen. So if I change my sensitivity, if I feel like I'm not seeing enough stuff on the screen, I can change my sensitivity. And you see, I just turned it up a little bit and look how much of my screen filled up. So the higher you turn up the sensitivity, the more stuff it's going to pick up in the water. So I'm still picking up fish arches. They're showing up really bright in here. But as you can see, my screen is just full of everything. I turn it up and it just, it's picking up too much stuff in the water column. So we'll go ahead and turn it down. I'm back to the standard auto setting. Now you can also adjust it too much out. So if I turn it down, you can see, I mean, just like to negative nine, you can see how much stuff it takes out of the screen. And if you turn it down too much, you're not going to see anything in the water column. Now, I know there's some guys out there that they use this feature that they say, well, if I turn it down a lot, all I'm going to see is the biggest fish and that's all I want to catch. Well, that is true, but turning it down too much, you can just clear the screen out completely and not be able to see anything. Because as you can see, we've got a lot of stuff that's showing up on the screen. Again, just a couple of bumps down. I mean, you can see how it just takes everything off the screen. So again, especially with our auto sensitivity, if you leave it in auto, it's going to help adjust itself depending on the depth of water you're in so that you don't wash it out too much if you get into shallow and as you get into deeper water it's going to add more of that energy back into it so that you can see that deeper water. Lucas, do we have any more questions on that? Nope, oh, I think you've done a good job answering those. Excellent. So those are some of the basics on your 2D sonar. Um, again, uh, preferences as to what you want to use as far as color palettes. That's one thing that everybody says is what color palette should I use? Uh, you should use the color palette that looks best to you. You know, what can I see best when I'm out here on the water? So, you know, this is palette 13. I use it a lot. There's number one that a lot of guys use. There's number two. Uh, a lot of guys like this one too. It's just, it's the same as number one, but the water column is blue instead of white. So, you know, just whatever works for you while you're out there. Just because somebody says, I use 13, so that's what you should use, or I use number one, so that's what you should use, that's not true. You use what looks best to you, what you can best interpret what you're looking at on the screen. So I think the next thing that we're going to talk about is structure scan. Um, we'll talk a little bit about down scan and side scan and, and the cones as far as, as far as how that looks. So like we had a prop previously showing you the 2D sonar cone, we've got another one here showing you what your cone looks like on side scan and down scan. Now as you can see we got a couple different colors here. If you look at this lighter blue right here in the center, 
That's what your cone looks like on down scan. And then for the side scan, it shoots out to the sides. So basically it helps, you know, that's what gives you the images out to 300 feet to each side if you're using 455, uh, 150 feet if you're using uh, 800 with the active imaging transducer. So this is basically representative of what your transducer looks like if you're using a total scan or an active imaging 3-in-1. You have your 2D sonar. It's at the front of the transducer where the cable is. That's where the element is for your 2D sonar. Again, it's going to be your round cone angle, just like it was previously with the other sonars. The difference comes where your down scan and your side scan is. If I turn it sideways, you can see our cone angle does not change for the 2D sonar. But for our side scan and down scan, you can see it becomes a nice thin slice. This nice thin slice of the high frequency, the 455 and the 800, is what allows us to be able to give you those nearly photographic-like images underwater that you're looking at. So we're going to uh, set this to the side. And I'm going to show you one more little thing here. A lot of guys ask, what am I looking at? How do I understand what I'm seeing when I'm looking at side scan? So, got a little piece of paper here to help you with that. It's a screenshot. This is what you're looking at at side scan. But now you can see how I folded it right here at the top. This is where the boat is in the water column. You can see it's right there. When I open it up, you can see the screenshot. Guys are used to seeing this right on the screen. So this is essentially where your boat is, the top of the water column. Then the darkness that you see there, sorry, wind's kicking up on us a little bit. The dark section that you see, that's your water column. So that's going from the bottom of the boat to the water, to the bottom in the water and then it goes out to the sides. So that's the easiest way to kind of show you what you're looking at on side scan and kind of help you understand it better. If you just kind of took it and folded it up like that, kind of accordion-like, you can see there's your water column, there's your boat, there's the bottom. When you lay it down flat, this is what you're looking at on your screen. So one of the big differences to remember when you're looking at your side scan. When you're looking at down scan and you're looking at 2D sonar, it scrolls from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. But when we look at side scan, it scrolls from the top down. So the top of the screen is the back of my boat. So as I'm driving along, anything that I see that's down here is back behind me. So let's go ahead and drive around a little bit. Um, again, we talked about being in some flooded timber here. Uh, this is a great spot. We found a lot of largemouth back in here. We also find a lot of smallmouth back in here because we got the nice rocky structure that they like back in here. Uh, we've got a lot of bait fish that wind up back in this area uh, due to the way the winds blow on here. So. The things people talk about on side scan. You can see right here at the bottom of my screen where it's still blurry. That's blurry because we were sitting still. Side scan and down scan are scanning sonars. They work when the boat is moving. So as you can see, we're moving along here. We're moving about two miles an hour. Um, probably anywhere from about two to six miles per hour is a really good speed for your scanning sonar. Uh, when you're using it to look. As you can see, we got a lot of flats out here. So the area that we're in, again, this impoundment was flooded. The dam was completed in 1988. That's when this lake was flooded. So in relative terms, it's a young lake, but it's a really awesome lake because we have things that are easy to find in here that show you great images. So like what you can see on the screen right now, I'm starting to drive over a roadbed and a bridge. 
you can see right here, there's the culvert for the bridge. I'm pretty much going right over the top of the roadbed, right over the top of the culvert. You can see right here, we're looking at the roadbed right here. We're looking at part of the roadbed here. You can see road over here. You can see channel swings in here where the creek is. I mean, it's just really cool with the stuff that's in here that you get to look at. So you can see right here, people go, why does it come up like that? That's because it's getting shallow right here. Remember from the center here to here is the water column. So since I came up in the shallows here, that's why it gets narrow. But as you can see, we're looking at this rocky structure that's down here. You can see the rocks, you can see the definition in the rocks, you can see those rocks laying on the bottom. The other thing that people ask me about is, well, what's this long black thing? What are these lines that I'm seeing on the screen? These, like this right here, here and here, these are shadows. We have standing timber back here. We've got flooded timber that we're driving around. So these long things that we're looking at are shadows. So those trees are sticking up in the water column. They're not laying flat on the bottom. You can see right here, you can see these trees standing up in the water column. You can see the shadows that they're casting. <coughs> so the shadows, that's a great, uh, it's, it shows you that something's up off the bottom. If you see a shadow, that means that log is not laying down, it's standing up. So it's a really great tool to help you understand what you're looking at, to know what you're looking at, to know that I, I can see that this timber is standing. It's not laying on the bottom. It's flooded timber. It's standing up. So as you can see, this line that's right in through here, that's the channel swing of the water that's in here, of the, uh, of the old creek bed that goes through here. So I can see that channel swing. You can see the difference. I look at it because it's a little bit darker down here and it's a little bit brighter in here. That lets me know that that is down and that's up higher and that I'm getting a harder return. So that tells me we're probably looking at a rocky bottom. So when you're out driving around, you may see something that looks like what you're getting ready to see here on the screen. And this is a smear. And essentially all the smear is, is me turning. So when you see that, that just means that's an area where you turned, you kind of smeared the images, it slid sideways. But once you start driving straight, it's all gonna clear up. As you can see, as we're driving back through here, again, you can see standing timber. Now here's something really cool. If you look right here and you see this white dot, that's a fish. I know those are fish in that flooded timber there. Um, I, I know it is because I spent a lot of time looking at the sonar. I understand what I'm looking at. Um, when you see these little white dots out to the side like that, a lot of times, if they don't look like they're on the bottom, like this one doesn't look like it's on the bottom, typically those are gonna be fish suspended in your water column. Now again, I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours looking at these screens. So that's why it's really easy for me to pick that up and to see that and call that out immediately like that. Um, when you spend time on the water looking at this stuff, you know, after you've been out there a while, it gets easier and easier for you to understand what you're looking at. So as you can see, again, we're looking in here at the flooded timber and another way to think of it to think of your transducer beam under the water is think of it as a flashlight at night, okay? If you're out here, you're walking around, you shine that flashlight and it produces a shadow. So while we're talking about shadows, if you look right here, I'm looking at this tree and this tree is laying down and I can tell it's laying down because it's not producing any shadows out to the side. There's a slight shadow right here where it's laying down, where, that's, where it's sh shining, where the transducer beam is hitting it. So you see that slight shadow and it's right up against it. So that tells me that is pretty much laying down there on the bottom. So again, going back to what I was talking about, it, think about it as walking around in the dark with a flashlight. If you are walking around and you, it's pitch dark out, and you shine that flashlight, and you shine it at a telephone pole. That light doesn't go through the telephone pole, it goes around the telephone pole. 
um, where the light doesn't pass through the telephone pole, you get the shadow. So essentially, your transducer beams do the same thing. When your transducer sending that signal out into the water, it's exactly like I'm shining a flashlight. So if I see a shadow, then I know, again, that is not necessarily on the bottom unless those shadows are touching. If that shadow is touching it, then that tells me that's something laying down on the bottom. But if that shadow is laying out and away from it, that tells me that it's up in the water column. So again, we're going to drive around a little more. We're going to look at this. Uh, Lucas, do we have any questions so far on side scan? I think the biggest question that was posed was what do fish look like on side scan? You briefly touched on it and showing some but I think people want to know if they also show shadows. Yes, actually, let me show you this one. I have a screenshot from earlier when I was out here. Um, I was out here last week doing some fishing for, for some hybrids. So let me show you this screenshot. So people are asking, what do fish look like on the screen? So if you look right here, again, this is smeared because I was sitting still. I was anchored up in a spot where I know these fish are. This is one of the areas that I fish a lot. So you can see right here on the screen, I, I, just ha I was looking away from the screen and I turned around and I'm like, oh my God, there's a wolf pack coming through. And literally, as I said that to myself, I had six lines in the water and four of them went down. So you can see the fish that are up here in the water column and they've cast this shadow right here. So if they hadn't cast that shadow in the water column, I probably wouldn't have even noticed these guys going by. But again, those shadows that they cast, again, being up off the bottom, you can see these are some white dots that are up here. Uh, and we're going to drive around some more and see if we can uh, find some fish because when we were in here earlier, there was quite a few of them around here. So we'll drive around and, and look some more. But this helps explain, you know, when you've got fish up in the water column, how they can cast a shadow down on the bottom. I think the last question we should have is around side scan range. Side scan range. Okay. This is where it gets tricky for a lot of people. Everybody wants to see as much as they can. And what I tell people is if you're looking for structure and things like that to fish, then you want to set your range out really far. So with our active imaging transducers, be it a two in one or a three in one, its maximum range is 150 feet to the left and 150 feet to the right. So that's 300 feet of total coverage. But I tell people if you're looking for fish, you want to bring that range in. Because if I'm looking 150 feet to the left for a fish, it's going to have to be a big fish to show up really well on the screen. So um, as far as range goes, a lot of times mine is set most of the time at 120 feet when I'm out here looking for stuff. Um, if I'm looking for fish to try and catch immediately, I'm probably going to set my range in at about 80 feet. So what that does is what I'm looking at is going to be fairly close to the boat. If it shows up, that means it's a fish that I can see. It's close enough to the boat that I should be able to catch it, that I should be able to catch to, cast to it. Um, that's one thing I tell people a lot of the times while we're on the water is if you're looking for fish that you want to catch, have your range at a castable distance. You know, if I, if I was running 455 and looking out 300 feet to each side of my boat, if I'm right at the edge of that 300 foot range, that's going to be a really small dot that I'm looking at and I'm probably going to miss it. And the other thing is, is at 300 feet, I cannot cast to it. So, um, we're going to drive back over this ledge area um, where this creek channel is. A lot of times there's fish hanging in here um, on the ledges of this creek channel. Uh, they do it here, they do it at a lot of other lakes. So uh, I'm going to keep looking at my screen while we're driving. So uh, while we're driving and Luke... Uh, uh, yep. I uh, would like to see a demonstration of how you can zoom in to take a better look at something on that. Okay, cool. So the question was on side scan, 
how do I zoom in to take a better look if I see something that I want to look at? So I'm going through here. I see these dots over here on the side and I want to look at them closer. So I, I can put my cursor on it. And then I just punch my zoom button. I hit the plus button. I can zoom in and I can get that closer look. So right there, again, I've zoomed in. Uh, the cool thing is, is we get all kinds of information on the screen. So this is telling me that where I'm looking at is 55.4 feet to my left. So you see that right down here on the bottom of the screen. I'm looking at that and it really doesn't look like any fish to me. So I just hit clear cursor. I can zoom back out You see I'm at 26 feet now. We're going to set my range back to 80 feet. So I've zoomed back to my normal screen. Uh, we're going to drive over this area. See if we can find some fish real quick. Uh, again, here in the water column, I can see this bait ball. So I've got a bait ball in here. So again, where you see these bait balls on the screen, you know, wherever you find bait, you're going to find fish. Uh, that's one thing that we've learned over the years, uh, be it freshwater, be it saltwater, uh, fish like to eat. And wherever there's food, fish are going to be. So we're driving back through here. Um, you can see we got a roadbed that we're going over right here. There's a roadbed that leads off to my left. We're going over the top of that roadbed. So I'm looking in here. So over here, right here on the right hand side of my screen, if I look at this guy right here. I'm going to zoom in on him. So you can see we've got this little bright dot, white dot here. And then if you look right here beneath him, just kind of centimeters over to the right, you can see that little shadow that he's casting on the bottom. So I'm looking at that and that tells me that's going to be a suspended fish over there. And he's about 56 feet to the right side of my boat. So, all right. Quick question there is that you have sensitivity on regular sonar, but what do you have to make adjustments? Great question. So the question that just came in was, on 2D sonar we have sensitivity. How do we, what do we use on our side scan and our down scan? And what we have is we call it contrast on our side scan and our down scan. As you can see, I'm set in auto, and as I turn it up, you can see things get hotter and look how quick it is just to wash things out. It gets so bright. It puts so much energy into the water. It washes things out. So I'm back to auto. This is the standard setting. This is typically where I leave it. And as you can see, if I feel like that I'm coming in too bright, I can bump it down. And as you can see, as I bump it down here a little bit, it starts to get darker and darker and it's real easy to take too much out. So, but what's really cool, like we've talked about leaving it in auto mode, if you look down here at the bottom, it's got the auto contrast that I can turn on and off. If I leave it in auto, even though I've turned it down, it's gonna continue to adjust the sensitivity based on the water depth that we're in. It still knows that, hey, I'm in auto mode, so I need to adjust it, even though he's taken some of the power out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this back. We're going to take it back to auto. Again, this is pretty much where I leave it all the time. Very seldom do I wind up having to change that. So that's covered the, uh, the side scan on this. So now let's talk a little bit about down scan. So right now I have fish reveal turned on on this unit. So we talk about it. And one of the great features is, is it allows me to look in these trees and see the fish that are in these trees. So if I look at this tree right here, I can see we've got a nice big arch down here in the bottom of this tree. So with the filtering system, you can see, I still see all of my limbs in here, but those fish that are in there, they pop up on the screen. And essentially what we're using is our 2D sonar information We've got an algorithm that goes in and goes, oh yeah, I'm looking at fish here. I'm looking at fish here. You know, th this is the tree, this is pretty consistent. So 
this isn't going to be fish. So what it does is it goes in there and it helps us filter out. It helped us, helps us see the fish arches that are on the screen, but it also allows us to still see the structure that's in here under the water. So we're going to try to roll over this area over here. You can see the changes in the contours. And again, if we look at the contrast, we're in auto. I start to turn it up a little bit. You can see, again, the brighter the bottom, the harder it is, even with your, two, even with your down scan and with your side scan sonars. So again, this helps me know a hard bottom versus a soft bottom. Um, I leave mine in auto. You can see right in here, it's a bit darker, so that tells me that's probably a soft bottom. As we start moving in here closer to the shore where there's a lot of rock and stuff, you can see along the bottom it starts getting bright and that tells me we've got a harder bottom going on here. And then as you can see, we're coming up over the roadbed and this old bridge right here. You can see there's a lot of stuff that's grown up along the side of this bridge. You can see we've got fish that are hanging out around where this old bridge structure is. Uh, more than likely, my guess would be that we've got some crappie hanging out in there because we're used to seeing those over here. Um, I'm going to drive over this way a little bit. There's a couple of nice trees that we're going to drive over. They look really great. So there's a lot of flooded timber back here in this area where we're at. So it's easy to find this stuff, but there's just some trees that look better than others. Uh, so we're going to roll down this way. Uh, zoom in on my chart here. So as we roll through here, uh, Lucas, do we have any questions on downscan so far? I think there's some general questions around choosing a palette. I think that's the side scan and downscan. Yep. Okay. So again, we'll talk about palettes and we'll talk about it just like we did um, with the 2D sonar. I use palette number one. It's a palette I really like. A lot of guys like this number two palette. <coughs> it really just depends on what you can see the best. Now, earlier we talked about the thermocline being right down here around 23 feet. I don't know if you can see it on my screen or not, but as you can see on the down scan, we're picking up that thermocline. We're picking up that denser water. So that's one of the really cool things, again, that you get with your down scan is that you can see it. All right, look at this tree that we're coming over right here. You can see we've got a nice tree, lots of branches in it. Look at these fish that are hanging out around it. Now this is what's really great about using fish reveal. Let me, uh, if I just back my sensitivity off. So I don't necessarily see those fish in the trees. I see the little white specks on my screen. But if I come back here and turn this back on, you can see those 2D arches start showing up of those fish that are in this area and around those trees. So people are like, why should I use fish reveal? Well, that's one reason why right there. It helps you see these fish that are hanging out in these trees that otherwise would just be little dots and little specks. So, um, you know, they don't create quite the arch that you're used to seeing on 2D sonar because they're not in the cone as long as they are for the 2D sonar. They're in just that little sliver. Remember, like we showed you, it's a little sliver. It's not a big round cone. So they're not in the beam quite as long. Uh, look down here, you can see, again, this is really great, showing that thermocline right there around 20, 22, 23 feet. You know, we can look at other color palettes. This number four is a bright green color palette. The six is a, a really great kind of our golden sepia type color palette. Seven is a green and blue color palette. Eight's another kind of golden yellowish color. Nine is a blue color. 10, again, another golden color. So like we tell people, what works best for you? What can you see best? What do you like? You know what looks good on your screen. All right, so we just bumped this tree, as you can see right here, comes all the way to the surface. Uh, looks like we uh, scared some uh, bait fish off the side of it right there too. You can see that little cloud, that cloud looks like bait fish. So that's a great thing about the fish reveal algorithm that we use, is when it looks at those balls of bait fish, it goes, 
this is not a regular predator fish. So it leaves it looking like that ball of bait fish that you're used to seeing on your down scan and on your side scan. So do we have any more questions uh, coming in on this, Lucas? I think uh, some viewers would like to maybe see the traditional sonar and the down scan side by side, and then the reveal putting them together. OK. So we want to look at 2D sonar side by side with down scan. Did they want fish reveal turned on or off on that, Lucas? Uh, I think you can leave it on. OK. Uh, letting them understand the Okay, so this is really cool. Let's look at this right here. You see this bait cloud? I know it's a bait cloud because that's what I'm used to bait looking like. And I look over here at my down scan. Look, there's the bait cloud. It looks like the bait cloud. Again, we talk about the fish arches not taking over on your bait clouds and stuff like that because of the algorithms that we use. So look at this guy here. This is a guy that's sitting in that transducer cone for a long time, so he makes that big, long arch. We were sitting there, we were idling, and we were in neutral and just kind of drifting with the water. We're driving over the top of this tree. So again, people are like, how do I know I'm not looking at limbs? Well, you can see we've got the tree here. We're not seeing the tree over here, but we're seeing these arches. See that arch and how it's long and angled? You can see that long and angled arch right there. So that's kind of what you're looking at when you're looking at your 2D and your down scan side by side, especially with fish reveal turned on. So again, I mean, look at these nice arches just coming out over here. Uh, we got another bait cloud coming in the screen here. So this is the difference between down scan and 2D sonar. You see this big bait cloud right here? Well, you can see it's right basically on the fringes of getting into our cone angle on our uh, down scan. So you can see it's not as big and defined, but you can see these nice 2D arches that were right there in that cone angle also. So. And that's one reason why they're, you know, you can use them together. You can use them, you can use your down scan solely with the fish reveal on. It gives you more real estate on the screen. There's all kinds of options to use on the water. Now, again, we talked about thermocline. Here we are, that thermocline's around 22 feet. You see it well-defined here. You see it showing up right here as that cloudiness in the bottom of the water column. So, you know, after spending a lot of time on the water, I know I'm used to looking at that thermocline. Look at this tree right here. So you can see it's all lit up on your uh, 2D sonar, but this is what it's going to look like on your down scan. And then with fish reveal, you can see these predator fish that are hanging in around this tree. More than likely, I'm going to say we've got some crappie in here. I'm going to use my trackback feature just a little bit. I'm going to willing to bet we've got some predator fish, be it bass or, or something like that, out on the sides of it. So, uh, you know, that's just really cool to look at. Again, there's another bait ball. You see it on 2D sonar, you see it on down scan. So um, I'm gonna pull up another screen here. We can kind of look at all of this stuff together. Let me fix this real quick. Uh, this is a screen I used a lot. It's one of my favorite screens. Uh, So this allows me to look at my left side scan on the left side of the screen, my right side scan on the right side of the screen, and then I split the middle with 2D sonar and down scan. So by using this, it just gives me the ability to go in here and look at a whole lot of information on one screen. So again, like I said, this is, this is one of the screens I like. Um, since we started to be able to do this, I know I've seen a lot of guys using it uh, because it, it really just, it helps them separate out when they look at that, they're like, oh yeah, I'm looking at something over here on the left side or, hey, uh, all right, so look at this, we're going over the bridge. We can see the culvert right here on the bridge. You can see a little bit of the railing on the bridge on this side. I mean, that's just really, something really awesome and such great detail to be able to see out here. Um, so, you know, just get on the water and use your equipment. That's, that's the best thing to do. Uh, there's some days I get out here and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go fish and 
I get out here and I may spend two or three hours driving around looking at stuff going, wow, I hadn't seen that before. You come at something at just the right angle and you can see something that you've never seen before. But again, on this lake, you know, the, the impoundment was finished in 88, so it's been flooded over 30 years. So there's just some amazing stuff to find underwater. And using my side scan and down scan, it's really great to find that stuff. Uh, Lucas, do we have any more questions out there? No, I believe we have uh, covered most of everybody's questions and we're basically right at one hour. Excellent. Well, guys, we thank you for your time this evening. Uh, don't forget, like we talked about earlier, get out there, get fishing, take those pictures with your kids and your family. Hashtag us with Anglers Unite. You know, it, it, it's been trying at times and a lot of us are happy just to get back on the water and and enjoy this beautiful resource that we have. Uh, it's really great that a lot of areas are starting to open back up. So get out there on the water, get to fishing, get to using your equipment. And don't forget, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us. Thanks guys, and we'll see you at our next webinar.